He smashed the pop charts, broke through racial divides. Tonight, millions are mourning the loss of singer, actor, civil rights icon, Harry Belafonte. He was among the first black performers to sell over a million records with his 1956 album, Calypso. Hit song on there, Banana Bo Deo. The Harlem-born Caribbean-American artist was an influential activist involved in the Montgomery, Alabama boycott, as well as a 1963 march on Washington, and a close friend of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Belafonte died earlier today from congestive heart failure, according to his publicist. He was 96 years old. His legacy, though, of course, lives on in so many ways, his work. But as a father, grandfather, a friend to many, including our next guest, Carrie Kennedy, daughter of former Attorney General Robert F. Kennedy and Ethel Kennedy. She's the president of the Human Rights nonprofit named for her father, Carrie. Um, I appreciate you being here. Ms. Kennedy, you worked so closely with Mr. Belafonte for many, many years in public, but also behind the scenes at your foundation. And I read this, that you loved his company but cherished his friendship. What did you most admire about him? I mean, I think, you know, he was a, a civil rights icon, and but so many of the people you think of in civil rights are kind of stuck in time. They're in the late 50s or early 60s, but Harry was engaged with Dr. King and helped organize the March on Washington, bailed Dr. King out of jail when he was in Birmingham. But then he went on to... Um, take up the cause of, of of the Peace Corps in Africa, of UNICEF, um, of HIV AIDS, of the anti-apartheid movement where he was arrested along with two of my younger siblings at the White House. You know, he just never stopped. And just four weeks ago, I called and asked that he sign a letter um, for our okay. annual Robert F. Kennedy Ripple of Hope Award, and there is his signature on the bottom of the letter. So wow. this is a man who, at 96, we're still working for basic rights for all. Active and, and passionate right up until the end. And of course, Belafonte, he shot to fame in the 19. 50s. He outlasted so many. And really, Miss Kennedy, he could have sat there safely at the top, you know, collecting money and, and accolades, but he threw himself into the civil rights work. What drove him on a personal level? You know, I think he, um, well, as he said, he, he grew up in both here and in Jamaica. Um, and he had this kind of very proud sense of his heritage and who he was. And um, so when he, when he came to the stage in the United States, he brought all of that uh, Jamaican music with him, the Calypso music, the, um, the farewell, uh, Jamaica farewell, um, it, the banana boat song, all of these songs that were folk music from his heritage and he was singing them and he was singing them on the biggest stages in the United States. So really breaking through color barriers, breaking through cultural barriers and celebrating the people who he came from. And I think that he was just always breaking barriers his entire life. I read in the New York Times this morning that Belafonte opened his Manhattan residence to Dr. King. It became a home away from home. As you mentioned, he paid his bail to get him out of jail, and he even maintained a life insurance policy on Dr. King and donated that money to the family, unfortunately, in 1968 when they needed it. And I read in here that Dr. King actually told Belafonte, get to know your father. Can you talk more about that? Well, I can't talk about uh, Belafonte's father, but I can talk about Belafonte really assuring that I got to know my father. I was eight years old yes. when daddy died, and there was a lot about him that I knew, of course, but um, Harry opened my eyes to other ways of seeing him. And, you know, the, the kind of the skepticism with which Harry and, some, and others in the civil rights movement viewed my father when daddy became attorney general because Harry personally had been targeted by Joe McCarthy. My father had worked 
at, on uh, by McC for McCarthy for about four months when he became disgusted by the senator's antics and had quit. But um, Harry said, Dr. King said, well, he must have a moral center and we need to find that. And, you know, I think that's the way Harry approached everyone in life, no matter who he saw, what they were doing, what they were saying, he was looking for their moral center and he was bringing out the best in all of us. And um, I think that daddy and Harry were really imagined made in heaven, two men committed to racial justice uh, and who had these kind of beautiful, open, loving hearts and a willingness to take on the toughest problems in our country. Beautifully put. Kerry Kennedy, president of Robert F. Kennedy Human Rights, friend of Harry Belafonte. Ms. Kennedy, thank you so much for your memories and I know you carry on the work. Thank you. Thank you.